Hi, and welcome everyone to our podcast at Chico State, Undecided. It's for Chico State students who are not quite sure about their major. And in this series, I'll be interviewing folks who have graduated from Chico State and have already spent a few years in the workforce. So here with me now is Andrew Puckett. He graduated from Chico State in 2017 with a degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, but he's currently a manufacturing engineer at Benchmark Electronics in the East Bay Area, uh, which he's um, done since he graduated at Chico State. So welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. So let's start with what is a manufacturing engineer and what do you manufacture? Ah, yeah. So a manufacturing engineer, their primary role is to work with the design engineer to take a design and determine what steps are necessary to manufacture the component. Um, and there, there's different specialties in manufacturing engineering. My specialty in particular is around CNC machining, uh, but there's a host of other different uh, manufacturing methodologies. But yeah, what, our, what our, is a CNC machine? A CNC machine, that is a, a computer numerical controlled machine. Uh, in my case, it's a lathe or a mill. Uh, they're machines used to remove material from a workpiece, um, either by spinning a cutting tool or by spinning a workpiece with a stationary cutting tool um, to form geometry that's defined in CNC programs. Uh, that's how we, we make parts with our machines, essentially. So that's like really high-tech sculpting. I, I guess you could put it that way, but it is, it is a bit like sculpting. <laughs> right. And so, uh, so please continue. What is it, what is it that you manufacture? So at Benchmark Electronics, uh, I work in the precision technologies division and we are specifically a contract manufacturer. So we take uh, customers predetermined designs primarily, um, and we figure out how to manufacture the items that they've already determined they want to make. In, in my case, our main customer is in the semiconductor field. So we make components that go into larger tools that are used to make uh, computer chips. Uh, they, they're used to print semiconductors onto silicon wafers, which are then sliced up into individual chips that go into your phone or into your car or into your toaster. Um, pretty much anything that consumes a, a computer chip we work to support building the tools that that are used to make those actual chips. Right. So even though you majored in mechanical engineering, um, you're comfortable in your position as a manufacturing engineer. Do you still feel like you used the skills that you learned at Chico State in your mechanical engineering degree in your position as a manufacturing engineer? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So. I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily using the fluid dynamics of the heat transfer that I learned um, as I was in studying my undergrad for mechanical engineering, but I'm using all of the, the uh, thought process and the problem solving capabilities that are really the, the underlying lessons that you, that you learn within those courses. So uh, there, there's a lot of really common ways that problems get uh, presented to you. And they're just packaged in one form or another, but you know the the method of solving these problems is rather formulaic, uh, and that, that's something that that I, I certainly learned studying all the different courses that I did that I'm not necessarily using at this point. Uh, but on, on top of that, in my in my undergrad, I actually did spend time working in the machine shop, learning different different forms of, of manufacturing. Is, is sort of a complement to the actual um, academics that I studied as well. So it ends up that, that a lot of those courses that I took um, translate more directly to the type of work that I do now. Um, but I, I feel like that's well complemented with the thought process that my um, academic courses really helped train me in uh, that I use on a, on a daily basis as I'm confronted with different problems. Okay, so your so your degree gave you some some really general knowledge that uh, that you're able to apply to this specialty, and and you could apply to other specialties if you if you wanted to. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I so you've got some 
your your degree isn't necessarily locking you into a particular field. No, no, not at all. All right. Uh, can you take us through um, a day in your life, a typical day at work? Yeah, sure. So most of my work is spent on site at the manufacturing plant. Um, so I'm there with the operations teams. So there's machinists, there's detailers, there's assemblers, there's chem clean operators, you know, it's a host of different people, all um, serving their specific function to support the processes of parts that flow past them. So um, most of my time spent there at the plant, and then a portion of my time is spent working from home doing you know, different types of work that pertain to my responsibilities. But typically, uh, a day starts around 6.30, 6.45. Uh, I'll get to the shop. I'll get my cup of coffee. I'll sit down at my desk, and I'll read through my email from the litany of emails that I've gotten from people overnight. Um, and I'll, I'll start to make a plan for what I need to accomplish during the day. Uh, typically, that's pretty well informed from where I left off on my day um, the day before. So it, it depends based upon what projects I'm supporting at that time and how many different customers I'm supporting at that time and what the status of those projects are. So sometimes there are parts that are found with uh, non-conformances from a process that was ran yesterday, the day before. So I'll have to go and, and review what reports there are that describe what those non-conformances are and determine, okay, how do we go about solving this? Is the part usable? Is it reworkable? Do we need to scrap it, uh, throw it away? Um, and then how do we get here? And what was the deficiency that drove us to this non-conformance? So that, that, that's sort of the, the day in, day out kind of grind of supporting uh, manufacturing lines. But Just problem solving over and over. No, oh, it's repetitive problem solving. The problems come to you in so many different forms, um, but it, it tends to be the same methodology to, to figure out how you arrived at this problem having occurring. Um, there's uh, the typical methods that we can get into at a different time, but a common thing to, to do is just continually ask why. Well, why did this happen? Oh, reason A. Well, why? Reason B. Well, why? Reason C. And you get to a certain point where there's no, many, no more whys you can ask. Um, and then you need to, to focus your efforts in investigating that last thing where you don't have a direct answer as to why that detail occurred. But my life's not entirely dealing with non-conforming material. Um, oftentimes there's continuous improvement activities that are going on, um, be it improvements on a manufacturing technique, the way that we generate this feature or that feature, um, be it a combination of this type of tool, that type of tool, that type of tool. Um, sometimes they don't yield the results that you want consistently. And, and you have to run a series of experiments to determine what's a better and repeatable method to achieve the result that you're looking for. And the challenge with that is typically you're doing these experiments on machines that are scheduled for production runs. So you got to get in, you got to execute and you got to get out. And hopefully you've designed your plan and executed to your plan well enough where you can get high fidelity information and understanding. So this, you don't need to interrupt production again um, to repeat your experiment after you refine it somewhat. Um, so that's, that's kind of a fun facet, uh, being able to, to work side projects for improvements on, on processes that I support. Uh, there's certainly customer meetings that I have uh, where I need to keep everyone informed on the status of things that they're interested in, be it a certain part that's moving through our shop or overall improvement in projects that they're interested in. Um, there, there's a myriad reason, myriad reasons as to why you would have customer meetings. Uh, another, another aspect of this position in particular is providing customer feedback, pardon me, um, in terms of design for manufacture. Uh, and in my position, uh, I, I work in the new product introduction department. 
there is opportunity to be in discussion with a customer as they're still in the design phase, as they're trying to determine what's the best route to manufacture a component. And that, that tends to be a back and forth between the manufacturing engineer and the design engineer uh, about what, what concessions can be made in the design and the design intent, well, without sacrificing the design intent. Uh, to, to make a part more manufacturable, to make it more economically manufacturable, to, to yield the highest chance of success, the greatest yield. Um, sometimes design engineers, um, they don't, they're, they're not well informed the limitations of specific manufacturing methodologies, and they'll, they'll embed details in the designs that actually are very challenging to manufacture that will drive up cost and, and produce the rate at which one can produce and reduce your throughput. Um, so another facet of the manufacturing engineer's job is to provide that feedback, to provide that service to say, hey, if you made this radius a little bit bigger, uh, if you made these internal corners rounded, if you, if you made this geometry just a little bit more like this, it'd be more conducive for us to use standard practices, cheaper tools, and it would ultimately benefit you in, in your, in your um, delivery of a quality product on time. So uh, kind of, that's kind of a reality check. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, and that, that's probably one of the hardest things to be able to provide um, in this role is that, that thoughtful, meaningful reality check. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the, the third facet of the job that's pretty common. Um, but as, as I'm away from the shop and I'm not getting pulled into problem solving, or if I'm not working a, a, an experiment to determine uh, you know, improved methods from not providing feedback to the customer for uh, improvements in their design, then I'm working on documentation. So that would be uh, updating drawings. I work a lot in SolidWorks. I produce a lot of mechanical drawings. Um, what what is SolidWorks? SolidWorks is a 3D modeling software. Okay. So you get to generate geometry, usually in a 2D sketch, and then you can extrude and make it three-dimensional and you can cut. Um, there's a whole, whole lot of power in that software. It's one of many different software suites that all accomplish the same thing. But so you really do, you do a lot of different things. Um, about how many, how many hours a week do you work doing all of these things? Typically it's about 50 hours a week that I work. Um, but that, that's including the lunch breaks that I take. I'm not closely monitored in the hours that I, I keep. Nobody's sitting there looking at the clock when I walk in or when I walk out. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm on salary, so I'm not punching a clock directly. But the understanding is that you know you're here, you put the time in to get the work done that you need to, uh, and usually that translates to about I would say 45, 50, 55 hours a week, just really depending upon the nature of the projects and the status of the projects that I'm supporting at the time. Right. Well, that is that is quite a lot of work. Um... So I'm not going to ask you the awkward question of how much do you get paid, but do you, do you feel like your salary is proportional to the amount of work that you put in? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, you're in the Bay area. You can afford to live in the Bay area. That says yeah. something. Yeah. There is a premium of living in the Bay area, but you know, you, you can job hop to different areas and see that you get 30% raise. You can, you can work in, in sales and work more directly dealing with customer interactions, which is not exactly my favorite thing to do. I really enjoy working with the operations. Those different routes get you a boost in your salary. But I have to say, working in my position, I think that I'm, I'm adequately compensated for the work that I do. Excellent. Well, it sounds like um, engineering degrees from Chico State give you quite a lot of opportunity. Thank you so much for being with us today, Andrew. It was a really nice conversation. And um, Enjoy the rest of your career. Certainly. Thank you. Thanks for having me.